So we played as white. Just push through the center as we do usually. And develop the knight. Opponent pushes through with the pawn. It looks like it's going to open up the center for us, which is good. So we capture the pawn, keep everything simple, there's nothing fancy, and all practical so that we understand what it is that we're doing on each move. Not just on a few sparing moves, we want to know what we're doing on every move and the impact to us and to our knowledge base at this moment in time. So we push through and block the pawn. Pretty simple, straightforward stuff, but it's also opening up the dark square bishop as well. So both bishops now kind of, they've been released into the wild in a sense. So we bring the bishop through, putting a check on the king, as usual, looking maybe to potentially bait the pawn down to stop this knight from getting to this key square, slowing their development down a little bit. So they do actually push the pawn down, so as we know, we just bring the bishop back now. So they develop their bishop, and we bring the bishop through, x-raying through to the queen. So they castle, so they have castle kingside. So in the long term thing, we would be thinking of this. We'd be looking at pressure in that area there. Things can change like that in the game of chess. So we castle and they bring their bishop out. We bring our knight through so it's developing. So all the minor pieces have been developed, feeling fairly comfortable. A smaller piece attacking a higher piece, can't be wrong. It's attacking a bishop is the ball. Bishop moves back. So they do capture, so we capture with the bishop, I was thinking of capturing with the knight, but the knight's at the moment sort of supporting its other knight. Still losing my voice. Bishop comes to attack the queen, but obviously we can bring our bishop now to actually attack their bishop. So we do, so they actually take the bishop off, so we can take the bishop quite nicely. We're still supporting this pawn, even though the knight's supporting now. So the bishop comes to attack our bishop, it's also attacking our knight as well. So we can take that off the board, the queen's advanced up the board, but it's not looking too damaging at the minute. So we look to exchange the queen off and they're not having any of it, which is a little bit annoying, you know, it's, you're thinking, you'd think you'd want to get these pieces off the board. So it is showing a draw at the moment. So the knight attacks the queen, queen goes running again to the other side of the board, looking to go and greedy munch the pawn. Rook puts pressure onto our queen, we move the queen out of the way, looking to potentially go for another queen exchange. Knight jumps down, we're still hunting the queen exchange. King queen moves again. So in my head I'm thinking, they must be losing some sort of temper here, but my position does not look that good and all I'm looking to do is trade down and trade these rooks down and see if that improves the position. So we go and challenge the, challenge the rook and the queen does an attack on our knight. So we can bring the knight off of the edge now, it's more functional here, it can defend the rook as well. So they attack us with their knight. So pretty straightforward stuff, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So we move our queen, supporting the knight. And again, smaller piece attacking a higher piece, the knight attacking the queen. So we bring the queen around, still wanting to support our knight. Then the queen comes across to the other side of the board. Um, I did think, well, I don't know if that's going to work. It's probably looking to come here to attack the pawn here. We might need to resign ourselves to losing this pawn. But in the meantime, I could be taking off these rooks. So we take the rook off the board and we go for another exchange. And as you can see, the computer is definitely not liking that. It's showing minus two. So they move the queen across, obviously looking to attack the pawn. Uh, so that reduced down their advantage and we gave them, gave them the advantage by pushing the pawn again. Like I said, I was trying to resign myself to the fact that I'm going to lose this pawn. Um, I couldn't see any other thing to do from here. It's not saying knight e4. I was thinking of doing that, but I'm thinking, well, can he not just go down here? And now when I'm looking at it, the knight is actually protecting the pawn. So the knight takes. 
and got to check on the king so obviously we're just going to come up with the king now and support and this is now minus 6.5 in my head i'm not i'm not even panicked i'm thinking I'm, you know i'll weather the storm here i'll get my pieces over and work with my king doesn't look too lethal in my eyes anyway so the knight takes the pawn I've still no problems there because how is his queen and his knight going to work together to get any checkmate on me so we bring our knight up now attacking the queen it's showing minus seven so actually in the game it's minus seven but you're playing a human how can they make this work you know what is the computer saying knight g4 Knight g4 is this here, so putting another check on the king. So the queen puts a check on, so it's just minus 5, but it's still minus 5. That's a, a big chunk. So we move the king across. All looks simple to me. I'm thinking, well, I'll, don't I just come and attack your knight? What does your knight do? So the knight jumps out of the way. It's still minus 6 now. It's minus 6.3. So this is really amazing to look at in terms of, well, you're actually, you've actually lost. But how does the opponent find the win? It's saying queen e4. Oh, sorry, that's us. So queen e4, we went. So the knight moves and attacks our queen. That's more a human thing, because, you know, the smaller piece attacking the higher piece. And then they push the pawn down. Looks like it's um, ready to come and attack uh, our queen here. So we start looking to put some checks on, start gobbling up some pawns. In a sense, this was my swindle because somehow, you know, my king was airy, but I didn't really see the clear way in for the opponent. So I thought, right, I'm going to make it look like I am in the game. So I'm actually going to go and do some greedy munching while you, you work out how it is that you're going to checkmate me because I couldn't actually see it on the board. So why waste my time trying to defend an area where I don't think it's possible for you to actually checkmate me. I might as well try and take some of your pieces off. So the king moves, so we grab a pawn. Then the knight comes down. I'm still thinking, well, there's no way in because at the end of the day, the only piece that's going to be putting anything on is the, king, is the queen and the knight's protecting this area. So I don't really see what it is that you've got. So we look to go gobble up another pawn because I'm thinking, I don't see it. I can take a few more pawns off if I want because I do not see any checkmate position. And the queen comes down and obviously they obviously negated the fact that the knight is protecting this area. So that's why I didn't see what their checkmate threat was and that's when the opponent resigned. 